Mr. Award, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Thank you for visiting us here in the consulate. I think when we talk about the two countries, one thing which is at the forefront of both these countries is agriculture and horticulture. How important is that sector for your country? Yeah, so it's an important sector for us. Um, we are a very small country with a very small surface area. But after the United States, we are the biggest agriculture exporter in the world. That's because of the technologies that we have developed over time. And despite it covering only one and a half percent of the agricultural area in the Netherlands, it, is, it contributes to 20 percent of, of production. our production. Mr. Avot, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Thank you for visiting us here in the consulate. Thank you for your time. I think it's a wonderful office, nicely secluded. But yeah, happy to be here. So we'll start quickly by understanding what do you do here as the Consul General of the Netherlands in Bangalore. A lot of people would love to know that. Yeah, so um, as you say, I'm the Consul General of the Netherlands here in Bangalore, uh, but not only responsible for Bangalore, but for South India as a whole. Um, and the Consulate, you can see it like a... Um, uh, an office that falls under the embassy. India is a big country. We mm -hmm. cannot cover everything from New Delhi, where our embassy is. So we have some consulate generals in the country uh, to focus on a specific region. So as the consul general, I represent the government of the Netherlands here in South India. Um, we provide support to Dutch citizens, um, some uh, visa uh, matters we, we handle. Uh, but most of what we do is focusing on um, strengthening the economic ties between the Netherlands and South India. So that means helping Dutch companies to find markets, to find partners, to set up business here in Karnataka, but also in the other states in South India, uh, but also looking at joint innovation. Uh, there's a lot of things happening. Uh, what can we learn from each other? How, co how can we collaborate, uh, including some academic collaboration as well? Um, and we are a relatively small team, uh, but a good team, and we have a representation from various ministries in the Netherlands here in our office in Bangalore, and one of them is the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, which is why we are talking right, today. Right, absolutely. I think when we talk about the two countries, one thing which is at the forefront of both these countries is agriculture and horticulture. I've been to Netherlands and I've seen the level of horticulture that exists there. I think horticulture... Netherlands is renowned globally for it. How important is that sector for your country? Yeah, so it's an important sector for us. Uh, not necessarily in how many people it employs, uh, but it's an important economic sector and especially also for exports. Um, we are a very small country with a very small surface area, but after the United States, we are the biggest agriculture exporter in the world. And uh, how are we able to do that with that little bit of, of surface area mm -hmm. that we have? That's because of the technologies that we have developed over time. And you see that in the Netherlands, for example, in, in horticulture, um, uh, glasshouse cultivation is very important. And despite it covering only one and a half percent of the agricultural area in the Netherlands, it, is, it contributes to 20 percent of, of production. our production. Um, so you see that te technology has helped us to, to be such a leader in, in horticulture. Um, and what we are looking now is not necessarily to to uh, promote all of Dutch grown vegetables, but we want to promote the technology. We want to help countries like India uh, to take uh, advantage of some of the technologies that we have developed, merge it with local solutions and then contribute to better quality food, more sustainable, uh, using less pesticides, less water, uh, and get better food outcomes working towards uh, food security, uh, not only for the Netherlands or for India, but for but the for world the as a whole. Well, I think that's a very important point you bring up. India has always been an agrarian country. Agriculture has been a part of our economy since day one. But something very interesting, you mentioned that a lot of Dutch technologies you're trying to build in India. Are there some technologies you can particularly point out which have been implemented in India? Yeah, so we have a few different things. For example, um, here around Bangalore, we have a number of Dutch seed companies. And what they do is uh, through natural selection and breeding, they try to develop new breeds, varieties of, of uh, mainly fruits and vegetables that are adapted to the local situation, but that are uh, less pest um, sensitive, that use less water, that are more resistant to climate change. 
um, so that these new breeds, these new varieties uh, can uh, yeah, be helped towards a better future for farmers, uh, get them better incomes, uh, better, uh, better solutions for the future. So that's something that we do around here in, in Bangalore. Um, as the Ministry of Agriculture here in India, one of the flagship projects that we have is the Centers of Excellence. Mm -hmm. uh, this is based on an agreement between our then Prime Minister Rutte and Prime Minister Modi to see if we can develop Centers of Excellence where some of the Dutch technology is brought into uh, an Indian organization funded by the Indian government uh, and see how can these solutions be fitted to the local uh, environment, uh, the local practices in agriculture uh, to help be get better outcomes and farmers can get trained. We can showcase some of our technology there. Uh, so that's also some of the things that, that we do here in India. Absolutely. I think two things which I've commonly seen across the farmers on the ground level, they might not know where the company comes from, but every single farmer knows about the seed companies you're mentioning. Be it the top companies, it's like a household name for them. And even the centers of excellence, we've seen multiple students, colleges sort of benefit from these training centers. So let's hope that more of this is being developed in the near future. Talking about the seed companies, are there some initiatives we are taking to strengthen the relationship between the seed companies and the Indian seed companies? Yes, we have the Netherlands India Seed Secretariat, um, which is operated here in India. Uh, it's supported by SeedNL which in its turn is a public-private partnership in the Netherlands between the government and seed producers uh, to try to work together uh, on uh, not, not only developing the market, but also looking at the obstacles that are there, um, getting uh, you know, a better regulations uh, for seeds uh, by bringing all the players uh, together. Uh, and, and there's a seed secretariat uh, here in India uh, that is working on bringing these parties together and talking also to the local uh, authorities uh, on behalf of the wider sector. Got it, got it. Talking about a big event that's coming up now in Bangalore, just a couple of weeks away. Yes. Horti Connect 2025 has Netherlands as its partner country. Tell me more about why you decided to partner and what are you looking forward to over the next two weeks? Yeah, so because horticulture is such a big part of the Netherlands, you know, I've been a diplomat for a long time and in all my postings, I've always worked with horticulture companies from the Netherlands. Uh, and I think we have something to offer. Um, this is a great new opportunity here in Bangalore. Uh, so I, I think we're, we're proud to be connected to that. Um, we will have a big pavilion um, bringing some Dutch companies, some Indian representative of Dutch companies together uh, to showcase uh, what, what these companies can offer. Um, and of course, at the event, we also have a, a national session uh, where we will showcase and talk about the solutions of, of the Netherlands and, and how that could benefit uh, companies in Bangalore, but not only in Bangalore, also in wider India. Absolutely. I think I've not seen this very often in Indian exhibitions. So this is a very good opportunity for people attending, be it farmers or companies. One final message you would like to say to the Indian agriculture audience with regard to Horti Connect 2025. Yeah, so I would, of course, uh, encourage um, Indian audience to participate, to come and see what is there, uh, to visit us in, uh, in our pavilion at the fair. Uh, there will be eight companies there, uh, but not only them. We will also have a representation from our side. Uh, I plan to be there. Uh, my colleagues from the agriculture department, we have our new agricultural counselor uh, from Delhi who has just arrived in India coming. Uh, and I think we are keen to see where we can help Indian farmers, especially in the more mid and high tech level, um, find solutions so that their companies can grow. Uh, farming is also a business and, and uh, we want to contribute to not only more sustainable and, and more climate resistant farming, but also ensure that farmers get a stable and, and growing income out of it as well. Uh, so I encourage everybody to, to come to HortiConnect 2025 here in Bangalore, and then to visit our pavilion and reach out to our companies and, and to us. Absolutely, 25th, 26th and 27th of September. Sir, thank you so much for your time. And we're looking forward to a fruitful collaboration beyond this event and for many years ahead. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so you. much.